Greetings, guys. Welcome to week three of my virtual object experiments. Hopefully the audio situation is a bit better this week for you. I'm actually using the headsets mic, but just in case, just to be sure, I'm going to let off an initial two gunshots here so you can calibrate your sound. So just in case, turn it down if you think it might be too loud. Here we go. And another. Beautiful. Hopefully that isn't too loud for you. Wonderful. So what do we have this week? This week we focused on some explosive stuff. I've got a whole table full of toys here. So the first object is the uh, M219 Grease Weasel Fragmentation Grenade. Don't ask me why I named it that. It just, just popped into my head. Um, it's got a pin on it that we can actually pull out using the grip button. So I'm going to pull that out. You can see it's physically jointed and such. Super fun. And the, the way the lever works, I know in real life no one actually cooks grenades, but it's something that happens in, you know, in movies all the time. You can just pull the trigger to pop the lever or spoon, whatever you happen to call it, off ahead of time. Or it can just pop off if you just straight up throw it. So I'm going to pop it off and then throw. Oops. Over a little bit. Awesome. Incidentally, you can actually pull the pin without actually holding the grenade, so I can just come over here, boop, pop it off, and throw it real fast. <laughs> Oof. And I've gone and blown everything off my table, so we'll reset the scene. There we go. And, uh, awesome. We also have a more sort of sci-fi grenade here, which with the touchpad click, we can cycle its fusing to be two, three, five, eight, or 12 seconds. Um, the long fusing time is so that if you happen to want to say, combine it with the graviton beamer, you could set off a really long fused grenade, pick it, have, and have enough time to pick it up and shunt it somewhere. So we'll just set that to five. Delightful. As you can tell, it's, you know, Half-Life 2 inspired. Next up is the match, which might be the futziest thing I've made yet in VR, and it's probably the highest density usage of resources per cubic millimeter I have ever done with an object. So let's try striking it on the box to start. There we go. Wonderful. And if we bring this up close, you can see that it's burning down. The material is transitioning to a burnt sort of submaterial, and the match is bending as it burns down, then goes out. And we can even tap it on something to knock off the burnt part, which is basically just the shader sort of alpha cutout dissolving down to that point. Wonderful. Matches can, you don't necessarily have to strike them on the box here. You can strike them anywhere. Basically, right now, what you have to do is maintain collision contact with a surface for about 10 frames with some amount of force that's sort of perpendicular to the collision normal. So you can't just sort of slam the match into something. You actually have to be dragging it across a surface. Matches can light each other. which incidentally, doing a whole bunch of the testing with the dynamite, I kept like throwing a match off and accidentally blowing myself up. So speaking of the dynamite, this was probably the biggest pain in my ass this week, largely due to physics. The probably way too springy fuse on this is, I think it's five uh, character joints each with rigid bodies, and this does not like to be moved quickly. Um, spent most of my time getting it so that, and you can see if I sort of wave this around, we see the fuse sort of rubber bands a little bit. There seems to be no way around this. I haven't, if there is, I haven't figured it out yet, but it at least throws smoothly. And we can light this at the tip.
Excellent. And the way the fuse works is we can either light it right at the tip or we can actually hit it a little closer. Ooh. Close call there. So that's been a blast. You can even say light one stick dynamite with each other. The other one must have fallen through the ground. Whoops. So yeah, so that's the, those are the objects that I've gotten working this past week. One other um, improvement to the way all of the interactions are working. I have to give a huge shout out and thank you to uh, Ron Carmel for suggesting this, which is that originally I had had it for the more oblong objects that you had to have your hand rotated a certain way to pick them up so that they didn't sort of physics glitch, you know, push into the ground. But this was super non-obvious. Someone without priming had no idea how to pick up the objects. So instead, I basically, ah, basically interpolate the mount point over about half a second or so, which gives you enough time to pick it up without it sort of glitching into whatever surface you're picking it up off of. And that seems to work pretty well. So yeah. Man, cannot load anything today. Wonderful. So yeah, so that's that's what I have to show this week. Um, hopefully next week we'll finally begin filling out the environment with something more interesting than monolithic cubes. And I've got a couple other surprises in store for you. So thanks for watching. Excellent.